Hello, God bless you. Last video, I spoke on obedience. Like I said in the last the last video, I'm going through the book of Matthew. And uh, I just wanted to highlight the things that I'm learning and um, what's standing out to me as I read through Matthew again. Like, like I said in the last video, um, we can never read the Bible enough. We can never um, get to a point where we feel like, Oh, we've learned it all. You know, I've read Matthew before, I've read through the whole Bible before, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't keep you can't keep learning. My dad always talked about how he read the Bible over a hundred times. He was always learning, always learning. I got a long way to go, a long way to go before I read the Bible a hundred times over. But um, you know, straight through, yeah. Uh, I've read it, I've read it, and uh, now, you know, I, I jump around. Like I said, last video, it's, it's difficult. Sometimes you want to start from the very beginning. Sometimes you want you want to study a particular area, and, uh, you know, I just, you know, you can never get enough. You can you can never learn enough. You can, you can never learn it all, you know. It's not like, uh, you know, like Mario Brothers, you know, where growing up, Mario Brothers, where there's a final level and you beat the game. Well, you know, there's no final level. Um, in learning about God, you know, his word is, is limitless, you know, and we, every time I read it, I, I see something different and, um, there's always a different, uh, lesson to be learned. Um, last night in my last video, I was highlighting the first two chapters of Matthew and I felt God showing me the obedience of Joseph and the wise men in those first two chapters, um, when God told them to do something, they did it without delay, without questions. And I was getting obedience. I was getting obedience from the first two chapters. Uh, as I'm on chapter 20 right now of uh, of Matthew. There's only 27 chapters, so I'll be I'll be done with Matthew tomorrow um, again, and uh, then I'll move on to Luke, um, uh, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So I'll, I'll move on to Mark, and uh, but. Like I was saying last night in my last video, I, I got obedience out of the first two, out of the first two chapters, and also chapter nine, I highlighted uh, the story of Matthew when when Jesus calls Matthew, there was no delay. He just simply said, "Follow me," and he rose and followed him. You know, obedience. So that's what I got out of the first two chapters of Matthew. Now today, I want to talk about chapters um, eight, nine, and uh, thirteen. I'm going to be in. Chapters eight, nine, and thirteen. I wanna, I wanna point out and highlight some instances where um, we see the importance of faith and belief versus unbelief. Okay, so this is these are the things that stand out to me as I read through this again. So um, I really hope this ministers. I really hope this ministers to you, um, like it ministered to me. I'm gonna start off in Matthew chapter eight, and. Uh, I'm being verse one, and the first the first story is where Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Now, leprosy was a was a was a bad bad a big deal back then. You know, it's kind of ironic um, with what we're going through now with COVID. Now, COVID is nowhere near you know the level of leprosy, but a lot of people treat it like it is. And um, yes, it's highly contagious. They say, um, but. You know, it's nothing like leprosy, but it's it's funny to me and ironic because leprosy was treated very. I mean, they would quarantine those people. Those people were not allowed anywhere near anyone. You know, they they had their, I guess, their own camp. You know, where you know, and if a, le a leper, you know, came where they didn't belong, people would freak. You know, don't breathe his air. You know, don't. You know, so you know, it, it's it's kind of ironic to me. You know, that was that was a real deal though. Um, you know, you you can be around someone with COVID and you know catch it or not catch it and you know it's, it's not nearly the same thing but it's just kind of funny to me you know like you know leprosy and you know the way they treated the lepers um and how you know now in 2020 and 2021 you know a lot of people treat people with covid or the possibility of someone with covid like they're a leper um but we see in this story um picking up in matthew chapter 8 Verse 1, it says, When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. 
And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. So I want to highlight some words here uh, and, and, and show how important they were and how this stood out to me. The, and behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. He didn't say, if you will, you might be able to make me clean. Uh, if you will, maybe you can make me clean. You know, I don't really got nothing to lose. You know, so, you know, if you, I'm either going to die or you're going to heal me. You know, I don't really got nothing to lose. But he says, if you will, you can. You can make me clean. He says to Jesus. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I will be clean. So the the words and the way the leper chose to speak were very important. If you will, if you will, you can make me clean. Not if you want to, you could possibly make me clean if you're in a good mood, you know today. Um, no, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and said, I will be clean. As, as you watch more and more of my videos, you see, I repeat myself a lot because when something, when something stands out to me, I never feel like I can make that point clear enough. And I, I want, I want to, you know, I just want to like, you know, make the point clear. If you can, if you will, you can. If you will, you can. Those are very important words that, that stood out to me how he chose to speak. If you can, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and said, I will be clean. And he was healed immediately. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And then we go down to verse 5. And now we see a story called the faith of a centurion. And it says, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. So this man comes in saying, my servant is lying paralyzed at home. He's paralyzed and he's suffering terribly. And he said to him, now Jesus says, and, and he said to him, I will come and heal him. Okay, I'll come and heal him. Verse 8, but the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. Notice that. Just say the word. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go when he goes, and to another, come and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10, When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be no there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Verse 13, and the, the centurion, and to the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Remember, the servant was not even there. So this man comes, says, Lord, my servant is lying home paralyzed and he's suffering terribly. And Jesus says, okay, I'll go to him. I'll heal him. No, I'm not worthy to have you in my home. Just say the word. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. Not, if you just say the word, maybe my servant will be healed. If you say the word, possibly my servant will be healed. No, I, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed, will be healed. 
You notice the power in that. We'll be healed. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And then we go down and Jesus says to the centurion, go, let it be done for you as you believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment because the man believed. There was no doubt. My servant will be healed. My servant will be healed. Go, let it be done for you, for as you have believed. Then we go to Matthew 9, and we see another story here of a, a paralytic. And this is verse 1, Matthew chapter 9, verse 1, and it says, And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. So now, we don't even see a conversation here in this. It just says, Some people were bringing over a paralytic laying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, so he saw their faith in action. They were coming for they were coming for healing, and he saw their faith in it. And he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And he was healed. Okay? So once again, we see the importance of faith. He saw their faith. And we don't even see a conversation in this one like we did in, in, in the last ones. We don't even see a conversation. He just saw their faith. It's like seeing their faith in action. He saw their faith. He said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son. Your sins are forgiven. Then we go a little further into Matthew 9, and we pick up in verse 18. And now we're seeing, a, uh, we actually get two stories. We actually get two instances in this one story, in this one passage, 18 to 26. It's titled, A Girl Restored to Life and a Woman Healed. So we see two miracles in this in, in this one passage, verses 18 to 26 in Matthew 9. And it says, While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died. So this man comes in and says, My daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Not she might live. She will live. Come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Verse 19, And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. So Jesus gets up to go and do this. Verse 20, And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. And Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. So this ruler comes in, this man comes in, his father comes in and says, My daughter has died, but if you will just lay your hand on her, she will live. Jesus gets up to go and do this. While he goes to do this, a woman. We don't, once again, we don't, we go back to not seeing a conversation here. He had a conversation with the ruler, but now as he's going with the ruler, the man, the father, to his dead daughter, we see a woman now come into the story. And there's no conversation. She says to herself, it says, for she, in verse 21, for she said to herself in her own mind, she's thinking this, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. I will, not I might. I will be made well. No conversation. She touches his garment and Jesus turned. He felt it. And seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. There was no conversation. How did he know that she needed to be made well? Because it was Jesus. Her faith made her well. And that when we go back to not even seeing a conversation between the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years and Jesus. And instantly the woman was made well. Verse 23, now, and when Jesus came to the ruler's house, now you know, he continues on where he was heading. 
And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but only sleeping. And they laughed at him. They laughed at him, these people. In verse 25, But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and he took her by the hand. And the girl arose. Remember what the ruler said, If you just lay your hand, but come and lay your hand on her and she will be and she will live he took her by the hand and the girl rose and the report of this went through all the district so we see two instances here of she will live i will be made well no doubt complete faith no unbelief nothing but belief then we go down and we see the next story right underneath it, picking up in verse 27, Matthew chapter 9. Jesus heals two blind men. Verse 27, and as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done for you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame through all that district. So in this one now we see they're you know crying out for mercy. And then they come to him and he tells them, Do you believe... That I am able to do this? Question mark. So now he's asking them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they simply say, yes, Lord. Not, well, maybe. Uh, what do we have to lose? Um, possibly. No, you don't see that. They just, simp they just, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith. Be it done for you. And their eyes were opened. Opened. So once again we see the power of belief. The power of faith. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 13. And uh, I'm going to go to the very end of Matthew chapter 13. And pick up in verses 53. Okay. And this is where Jesus is, re is rejected at Nazareth. Yeah, his hometown. He's rejected. So I just gave you five or six instances where we see the power of belief and faith. And now we're going to see the opposite. We're going to see the opposite to prove the power of faith. Verse 53 of Matthew chapter 13. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there. And coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? They're saying, Isn't this isn't this not remember he's in his hometown? Isn't this Joseph's son? Where did where did he get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not his mother called Mary? This is Mary's son. How, how did he get this? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and are not all his sisters with us? Where did this man get all these things? Verse 57, and they took offense at him. They were offended by it. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. Verse 58, I love this. Watch this. Verse 58, and he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. So I just gave you five or six instances in, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 8 and 9 where we see the power of belief, the power of faith. He did these things because of their faith, because how great their faith was, because he saw their faith. And then we go to chapter 13 and Jesus is in his hometown, his old stomping grounds, and they're offended by his wisdom and his mighty works and he did not do many 
mighty works here because of their unbelief. So I wanted to share that with you guys. The importance of belief, the importance of faith. How much, how valuable it is to believe. We got to believe. We got to have faith. Because we see what happens when they had faith. And we see what happens when they don't. When they believe and when they don't believe. So I just wanted to share that with you guys as I as I go through Matthew. I'm going to be sharing every, everything that stands out to me as I go through it again. I'm on chapter 20 right now. There's seven more chapters in Matthew. Um, and I, I just really wanted to share that with you guys. I hope that blessed you. Um, I know we all we all go through, you know, um, doubt and unbelief and hard times. And it's difficult to have faith. But um, we must have faith. We must believe. Uh, me and my family are a family of faith and, and belief. And belief, you know, my sister's name is Faith. You know, my parents named her Faith for a reason. And, um, you know, God doesn't always answer our prayers how we pray them. And me and my family learned that uh, last year when, you know, my father passed away in February. Shockingly and unexpectedly out of nowhere. You know, I mean... It, he got stage four cancer, for those of you who don't know, but it came out of nowhere, is what I mean, is it came out of nowhere. Everything was fine, we thought, as we ended 2019. And then 2020 smacked us right in the face on January 1st, January 2nd, when my father got his diagnosis out of nowhere after being misdiagnosed just a few months earlier. And seven weeks later, he was gone. So, so God doesn't always answer our prayers how we pray them, but we still believe. We still have faith. There are also instances in the Bible where where Jesus does not heal everyone. And in my next video, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go over that. I'll probably go over that. Um, but we got to believe. We got to have faith. We see the importance of belief versus unbelief in these instances that I just pointed out in Matthew chapter 8, 9, and 13. The, the, the power of belief versus unbelief. So I pray that that ministers to you, um, whoever comes across this video. Um, you know, God knows. God knows why I'm talking about this today. And, uh, uh, and that's why this, this channel, you know, is, you know, that's why I created this channel. Um, you know, not just for the people I know, not just for my family and friends, but for whoever, whoever comes across it on YouTube. This may minister to someone, you know, a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, who knows, you know. And uh, that's what this channel is all about. And uh, so that's just what I wanted to share, um, what I got out of those, those instances in Matthew. I pray that ministered to you. God bless you. Have a great day.